What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, going to be watching some Patrick Queen Tate breaking his game down. A lot of you guys have been asking about this after he just signed the largest contract in Steelers franchise history for an outside free agent. Really excited about this one just over the past 24 hours. Been trying to get to as much tape as I possibly can, get to know his game a little bit better. I'm going to go over, you know, strengths, weaknesses, all that stuff. And then we're kind of going to break this video down into different segments. We're going to go over run defense. We're going to go over what he offers as a blitzer. And then we're going to go over, you know, how he fares in coverage. I, I'm going to spend probably the most time on the coverage segment, to be honest with you, just because I feel like that's where I've gotten the most questions. And it seems like a lot of back and forth discourse on social media. So I want to attempt to clear up some of those kind of narratives. So just before we get started, y'all do me a favor, just drop me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. All that stuff helps the channel grow and it allows me to bring you guys even more content just like this. So without further ado, let's get to it. So Patrick Queen, three-year deal, a little over $40 million, makes him the seventh highest paid inside linebacker in the league right now. Um, really, the first thing that stands out with Queen, man, is just his ability to run sideline to sideline. Uh, he's a phenomenal athlete, one of the best at the position. Um, just his range, you know, all these outside perimeter runs, he just has the speed to track those down really instantly. Um, and some of the things that I really enjoyed, you know, seeing his development, I watched some 2022 tapes, some 2023 tape, seeing plays like this, get a little motion, a little eye candy, pitch out. You know, they try to get him with a blocker right here with the wide receiver. He just truck sticks that guy, makes a tackle on Kyron Williams. This is a dude who's always making plays around the line of scrimmage, quite a few tackles for a loss. Those types of impact plays, I think, are really what you're looking for at the linebacker position when you're paying somebody this amount of money, right? So Patrick Queen, I'm very intrigued uh, by his game. And one of the things that I've talked a lot about just over the course of the offseason – the Steelers need to get it, needed to get faster at the second and third levels of the defense. There was no qualms about it. You watched their defense last year. They felt slow. Patrick Queen, he ain't slow. Like, he adds a different type of dimension um, at the linebacker position that they really just haven't had really since Ryan Shazier um, has been injured. This is a really nice play that I saw from the Jags game last season. They're trying to put him in conflict here with an RPO to the top of the screen. You know, Queen has to basically, uh, you know, cover down if Lawrence pulls this or wants to throw to the top of the screen. So he has to move up and then watch him cross the side of the field, make a nice tackle on uh, Travis Etienne right there. Just the ability to cover a lot of ground, his range, his explosiveness, the burst that he has um, is just really special. Uh, definitely a different type of linebacker than what the Steelers have in the room right now with the Landon Roberts, you know, being more of that thumper type. And even Cole Holcomb, who I consider more of a run and hit guy, kind of similar to Queen, but I do think they have some differences just in, you know, Queen's just a different type of athlete. There are very few guys like him at the in the NFL. You know, he's a smaller dude, but this dude runs extremely well. Uh, I mentioned kind of the tosses and some of the stuff to the perimeter. Queen's excellent against zone runs. So one of the things I like about his game, as he's gotten older, you know, he came into the uh, into his career, you know, as a 21-year-old rookie. He just turned 21 before he uh, played his first game. But as he's gotten more experienced, as he's gotten more comfortable, you're starting to see him play fast. And that's one of the things that I really like. Like, he's always been this really fast athlete, but he's starting to actually use that speed. And one, one of the ways that you see it, him getting downhill and shooting gaps. So the Titans right here, heavy zone running team. He's going to shoot this A gap, make the tackle on Derrick Henry in the backfield. Again, just getting skinny through the hole, making the nice tackle clean up. That's something that we're definitely going to see um, next year. You know, the, the Ravens, they lost Patrick Queen. The Steelers took him from him. But they just inked Derrick Henry to a contract as well. So we're going to get to see this one-on-one -on -one a couple times, maybe three times next year. Who knows? Um, but that's one of the things that I like about Queen. He's best when he's working downhill, playing fast. And a lot of these zone rushing schemes, you know, that are designed to – you know, maybe have guys reach him at the second level. When he's playing fast and trusting what his eyes are telling him, what his instincts are telling him, he has the ability to shoot these gaps. Really nice play here. He actually takes kind of a uh, almost like a backside route. He goes outside the tackle. But, again, just the ability to kind of flatten this angle off and then beat Harris to the line of scrimmage. You know, he made a couple plays like that in run defense against Pittsburgh last year. Um, and, you know, we talk about it all the time. There's, you know, when, when players play well against the Steelers, a lot's been said about Mike Tomlin's comments to him, kind of their back and forth on the field. But when players play well against the Steelers, they typically, you know, that's something that the Steelers take into account when they go through free agency. You know, those type of performances really stick in their minds. Wanted to go over, you know, like I said, I think where he's at his best 
uh, in run defense. It's like when teams are trying to run a bunch of zone, you know, really get out to the perimeter. Um, but there were more encouraging flashes against duo and against power or gap schemes than I was really anticipating. Right here, the Rams are going to be running duo to his side. This is just basically they're trying to get double teams on both the tackles and then work up to the second level. One thing that I love about Queen's game, he always keeps his shoulder square. So right here, again, he presses towards the line of scrimmage, takes these kind of two hop steps, but remains square, and he's got that gap. He's maintaining gap integrity in the A-gap. But as soon as Williams makes that kind of cutback to cut back to the uh, the backside of the formation, you'll see Queen's ability to just basically transport gaps, man. Because of how agile he is, his change of direction ability is just really different at the position. So he, he puts himself into good situations to be able to use that athleticism and that change of direction ability. Again, nice job. The um, the guard right here is a little bit late getting up to the second level. But, again, this is what him playing a little bit faster, I feel like, in years three and four allows him to make more plays like this. Um, he, had a, he had a lot of really nice plays against the Bengals last year. I watched both of those games. Um, this is a, just a good example of him. You know, the, the double team doesn't get up in time, and this is a really light box count too. So the Bengals, a heavy shotgun. They're, they run a lot of gun run stuff. They like to spread teams out, a lot of 11 personnel. So really, this is a, basically a five- to six-man box, depending on how you would classify Roquan Smith, number zero. The Queen does a good job here, again, just keeping a shoulder square. And he's almost taking up the the right A gap, and then he's going to work all the way back to the left side B gap. And that's just phenomenal stuff right there. You know, Mixon's trying to almost bait him into making a decision. But I just love the patience to kind of wait this thing out. You know, by staying square, it allows him to basically mirror the uh, the running back's movements. And basically, again, we see him just go gap to gap and make make a run stop. It's just awesome stuff right there. You know, with um, with Queen, too, I just feel like, again, over the last, you know, really year and a half, really since they brought in Roquan, you know, he's just been playing a lot faster, you know, trusting his instincts, trusting his eyes, because I felt like that was really his downfall when he came into the league. You know, he was, you know, a really young dude. He came in during COVID. Wink Martindale's system is a really difficult one, you know, to kind of from a responsibility standpoint. And then he played for Mike McDonald. You know, he basically said that was the best thing that could have happened to him because he gave him more confidence. They moved him. You know, he's playing a lot of will linebacker. And just being able to make plays like this, you know, this right guard is a little bit late coming off of the double. Or I should say, yeah, I should say the center. A little late coming off to the double. But, again, just being patient making a nice stop. One of the things about Queen, you'll notice, like if you look at like pro football focus, his missed tackle rate's sort of high. It's in like the mid-teens, uh, like 14 15%, I think. But most of the games that I was watching, they weren't just like blatantly obvious or terrible missed tackles attempt in the open field. He just lets a lot of guys kind of fall off him a little bit. He doesn't have a ton of tackling range in terms of he doesn't have long arms, and that kind of takes away some of the things. We'll talk about it a little bit later in the video. But with, with Queen, you know, there are some times where he'll allow ball carriers to get yards after contact. And I think that that's, you know, it's notable. It's not a huge issue because that's not why you're signing him. You're signing him because of his speed, the athleticism, the, the range that he has as a runner. Um, but, you know, this is, there are like examples like this are things that, you know, make me happy to see just the patience that he plays with and just become a more refined player. So they're going to kind of flip uh, run responsibilities right here with the edge crashing inside and he's going to rotate and switch gap responsibilities with him. Again, he's just being really patient right here. The Browns are running kind of a counter, like same side counter play with two pullers. He's basically waiting on this tight end because he has to maintain contain on the edge and force everything back to the middle. So he's maintaining, you know, the edge a little bit. And then once this tight end gets bumped backwards, just shoots the gap, makes a nice play on drone four in the backfield. Again, this dude was constantly around the ball, and I think, you know, really speaks to, you know, obviously his athleticism, but, you know, he's just come a long way in terms of his processing, his instincts, the way that he plays the run. You know, with Queen, one of the biggest things that he does well, and they let him do a lot of this in Baltimore, was blitz the quarterback. Uh, he's a guy who, you know, with that athleticism, with the straight line speed, the trigger, all that stuff, getting this dude downhill is where he's at his best. So you basically just got to unleash him sometimes and see if he can wreak havoc in the backfield. See him run over Jerome Ford here, just blitz him right up the A-gap from the second level. 
you know, Baltimore runs a lot of sims. They'll put him at the A-gap mugged up. They'll do stunts with him, which I'll show some examples of that as well. But, you know, with the Steelers trying to implement him into the defense, this is some of the things that they'll need to allow him to do from time to time. Just try to get after the quarterback and cause havoc. Because these negative plays also, uh, often follow. I think he's got like double-digit sacks or close to it uh, over the course of his career. And, you know, he, he can make some dangerous plays for you, some splash. Um, one of the things that Baltimore does a lot of, they're a heavy stunt team. So right here is kind of that uh, A-gap mug look. They got six guys at the line of scrimmage. Queen is on the right side of the formation in the A-gap. What they're trying to do is they're trying to run a stunt and they're having him crash or use him as the penetrator to basically pick this right guard. And you'll see him crash right into this right guard. And he's trying to set up the defensive end for a one-on-one -on -one with the back because that's normally a matchup you know, that defensive coordinators are trying to get after. But he does a good job not only giving that dude the pick, but you know, you'll see the hustle and just him staying with it, playing through contact and getting back to the quarterback. You know, several of the sacks that I watched over the past two seasons were him were as a result of him playing as kind of the crasher or the penetrator on these stunts. Here's another one right here uh, against the Steelers, actually, against Kenny Pickett last year. This is the first matchup. He's again in that double A gap mugged up look, picks the right guard. I believe that's her big. And, you know, he's setting up his teammate for a one-on-one -on -one with the back. Does a good job playing through contact, using his hands, ripping through and making the sack. So one of the things, too, that I kind of learned, like, watching, like, some clinics. And, like, I think it was, like, last summer I heard a coach talk about, like, how, how linebackers or how teammates are on stunts when the stunt isn't designed to get them free is kind of a result of what kind of teammate they are. And I, I think that this – the how hard he goes as, as the penetrator on these stunts – to pick guys for his teammates, I think speaks a lot about like the type of teammate he is that he's willing to, you know, go really hard, try to set his guys up, you know, for, for better opportunities. And there were other clips in that I didn't include in here of him basically working as the penetrator and setting his teammates up for easy sacks, you know, and that's, that's the stuff that you really like to see. And then obviously as the Steelers, you know, have always been known for, you know, heavy hustle and playing a million miles an hour to the whistle you know, you think of all the times that we've watched, you know, Steelers first and second level defenders make all these crazy plays down the field just with hustle running down ball carriers from behind. Right here, Queen's trying to disguise a blitz. He's lined up over Jamar Chase as the number three receiver to the left side of the screen. You know, he comes on the blitz, but unfortunately they throw a little bubble screen out. You know, instead of just, you know, saying, okay, I'm out of the play, it is what it is, he hustles, gets back into the play, and then you see the hit power. Lays a really nice hit right here to try to get the ball out. Again, I think that this kind of stuff, when you're talking about, you know, paying somebody a heavy, heavy contract, right? Like you're about to make this dude one of the highest paid players in the league at his position. This is the kind of stuff that you want to see. Like, is this dude going to change his demeanor once we pay him? And I, I really think that you're going to get that same type of intensity, the same type of motor from Patrick Queen every single play. And I think that really fits what the Steelers do on defense. And it's not really a surprising that a surprise to me that they would bring him in uh, to make that type of investment. Uh, right here, Queen's going to be lined up in the middle of the field. This is a third and long situation, and uh, we're starting to get into the coverage stuff, so probably take a little bit longer to kind of explain, you know, some different things, some more detailed stuff. But this is really the reason that I'm really intrigued by this deal and what it could potentially do for the Steelers' defense moving forward. But right here, this is third and nine. So in, in the NFL right now, you're seeing a lot of these split safety defenses, right? So what defenses are trying to do is – we're going to make you check the ball down. We're going to take away the deep explosives. We're going to force you to check the ball down and pick up first downs, you know, on these check downs. Well, one of the good things about having Patrick Queen, he's basically a vacuum for stuff in the flats, check downs underneath the ball in the middle of the field. Like the way that this dude can run, the amount of ground that he can cover, it just prevents these check downs from turning into positive plays. Now, this is third and nine. But it wouldn't matter if it was third and five, third and three. I mean, he's he's got that type of range. I mean, this ends up. Watch where he starts when this when this ball care or when this ball gets out. He's at the middle of the logo. Back catches the ball right there, and he basically makes this play for a one yard gain. And that's like the type of athleticism they just the Steelers haven't had a guy that can move like this since Ryan Shazier got hurt. And I know that that's always going to be the comparison when the Steelers sign guys that are athletic, you know, it's been well documented. They brought in, you know, a dozen guys to try and replace some of the stuff that Shazier can do. 
this is what this is why you go out and pay a guy like this is because like he can make plays that other guys can't you know he just looks like a different type of athlete on the field that's why he's getting paid so and I can think of several examples last year you know whether they were film rooms that we went over um, on the channel or stuff that I would tweet out on Twitter of the Steelers just getting burned you know in the in the red zone when they were trying to match up and and uh either man or zone coverage to the flats you know giving up easy completions like that because they just didn't have the requisite athletes you know they were forcing guys like that are thumpers or backups um and like Miles Jack or Landon Roberts those type of players into roles where they were having to cover a lot of space and that's just not their game right here you see a good example of Queen he's having to he can't fly directly out to the flat because they're working a three-level route concept or three level route combination. So he almost has to hang in this kind of curl window right here just long enough to get the check down out. Again, make sure he gets underneath the curl and then he's, you know, he's got vision into the backfield. And once he sees this ball thrown out to the flat, and then that's a one yard gain. This year or last year, I should say, these types of plays, like these type of plays were going for touchdowns or definitely first downs against the Steelers defense on occasion when they got into the red zone just because they were getting burned to the flat. And that's just not going to happen. You know, it seems really elementary and really easy, but that stuff's not going to happen with Queen on the field. He's going to be able to cover that amount of ground, the receiving backs and all these check downs and stuff. Um, you know, teams, I hope, you know, with the Steelers pass rush being what it is or has the potential to be if everybody remains healthy, teams are going to have to, you know, throw the ball short, get the ball out really quick. And he's the type of player that's going to eliminate a lot of those uh, kind of underneath throws. So now I kind of got this broke out into the man coverage examples. So one of the areas that I was really, really surprised was the man coverage ability for Queen. This was something that I wanted to look a lot deeper into for my own, you know, personal opinion, because I've seen a lot of, you know, back and forth about his coverage ability. And I was honestly really impressed. Um, there were several different games where I just found myself really blown away by his how sticky he was in coverage. Here um, he's going up against Chig. I'm going to mispronounce his last name, so I'm not going to try, but this is a really athletic tight end for the Titans that he's covering at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you know, I, I want to say he ran extremely fast in the 40. He's a receiving tight end. He's not really as much of a tight end as he has a receiver, but you'll see him work out. Uh, this is just a little stick or out route. I mean, he's with him the entire way. Does a good job, you know, making contact right here at the second level. And then basically he's like attacking that low hip, low shoulder area to basically jump this route and sticky. You know, and basically he takes this away to the point where, you know, the quarterback ends up having to eat it, you know, and, and that ends up being a sack for his teammates. So a lot of coverage ability for him. Now, another thing right here is he does a good job maintaining leverage in coverage, and that's something that I really appreciate. I think it's really important for linebackers. So here he is inside leverage. They're playing another split split safety defense. Looks like a little cover two-ish shell or two match maybe. And the tight end does a, you know, he's trying to push off. He extends his arm. You know, I think that Queen does a good job, you know, playing through contact, some of that play strength showing up, and then getting right back underneath on the sail route to take this away. I think, unfortunately, this ends up being a scramble. But if you look in the backfield, like watch the quarterback's hand separate because he's anticipating this being open because that's the number one read in the progression. But Queen's underneath this throw. So if this does get thrown, this is probably going to be a pick or he's at least going to have a chance to like play through the hands or get his hands on some type of uh, of the football for like a deflection or something like that. And, you know, with, with Queen speed, you know, he ran a four or five at the combine. This dude is capable of carrying guys vertically. So we've seen him match up on some different tight ends. This is, I believe, Irv Smith at the bottom of the screen, another guy that's more of a receiver than an inline guy. But again, I like this little bump at the five yard mark try to get him off, reroute it a little bit, and then get back under the sail route. Again, Burrow's looking to this out of the screen because that's the number one read on the progression. Everything's working to the right side of the field. It's like kind of flooding that area, that zone area of the field. But, again, that's really good coverage. And he can afford to kind of play low hip, low shoulder because he has safety help over the top. So that's a good understanding of, like, where his help is. And that's, you know, ultimately what makes you a really good zone defender is understanding, you know, where everybody, what everybody else's responsibility is and where your help is. Um, ball goes elsewhere for a first down right here, but another just example I wanted to show just of how fluid he is. You know, when uh, he gets matched up in the slot and, you know, threats start attacking him vertically. So it looks like the Ravens are playing some type of – this is either like cover two, maybe Tampa or two match, something like that. But, you know, does a good job just flipping his hips right here and running and finding like low hip, low shoulder. You know, he's got safety help over the top. 
And really, like if if the quarterback wants to make this throw, man, and you're you're gonna make him throw it over your shoulder, that's a really difficult throw and something that you know defensive coordinators are willing to you know live with this type of throw if Burrow wants to try to fit that ball in, you know, above the linebacker but before the safety. So it's really good coverage right there. So when it comes to like man coverage stuff, I was really impressed. You know, I, I remember this specific play um, just because I already had it saved on my computer. But he made an incredible play right here. You know, empty. We talk about empty a lot on here, um, but this two week uh, receiver at the bottom of the screen, that's the playmaker spot. So that's really where you want to put your quick win guy. Um, the Steelers, for whatever reason, have Allen Robinson down here, but they're just running a little option route and trying to get this receiver, trying to get Robinson to cross his face for easy completion. Look at all the space. Uh, they're running a stick concept up at the top of the screen. Look at all the space at the middle of the field that he's tasked with defending one on one without help. Does a good job just staying balanced, staying leveraged staying low in his stance, doesn't really get hands on right there, but, you know, attacks a low hip, low shoulder, and is able to get kind of that left arm in there for a nice little pass breakup. Now, when offenses are spreading you out like that, and they're they're looking for that type of matchup, they're looking to get one of their better receivers on, like a weak side linebacker or a safety or something like that um, on the backside of the formation. And the fact that Queen, I know Allen Robinson's, you know, he's not the prime Allen Robinson we saw in Chicago, but the fact that he can do some things like this and still, you know, hold up a little bit in coverage and not just be completely overwhelmed to where this is just an automatic first down is really impressive. And to make that type of play at the catch point is really impressive as well. You know, there were a couple of examples. I didn't clip all of them. There's another one where he's running with a wheel route up the, t up the sideline and he plays through the hands really well for a pass breakup. So in terms of man coverage stuff, I don't really have any concerns when it comes to Patrick Queen you know the Steelers play a lot of man coverage in general I expect that to be the case in 2024 but I don't really have any concerns with that now that's kind of the baseline coverage stuff can he do you know enough to stay on the field for three downs now if you want to be a really like a good coverage player I think that you have to be a good in zone coverage that's the more difficult um, aspects of you know playing pass defense at the second level really a uh, nice drop right here he's playing Mike linebacker this is kind of another Tampa two. They're getting a max protection look, play action, two, uh, well, three man route combination to the top of the screen. He's really tasked with running with this vertical clear out right here, but he does a good job. Like even when this vertical clear out is going, you can see him eyeing that top receiver because he knows like some type of dig or some type of hitch route or hook is coming underneath. That's why they're trying to clear out all that space. So, once that clear out goes, he's passing that route off to the safety. And then he's like, okay, I got to find this secondary route. Does a good job getting under the hook. And then that ends up turning into a throwaway on second down. So unfortunately, they, they didn't get the sack. But I'll show you guys from the end zone angle. Again, play action. Does a good job not, not taking false steps. You know, heck, he's working back to get depth in his drop before Tannehill really has even, you know, completed his play fake. But you can see Tannehill right here. He's got eyes on that hook because more often than not, that's going to be a throw that's wide open. You can see him start patting the football, you know, pat, pat. And then he eventually, you know, runs out of time because it's really well covered and ends up having to throw it away. So, you know, that's certain stuff that I you can't really, like, grade. Like, Pro Football Focus won't grade that play because it's not a, an official target. And I don't know if you have to really watch the film to really see his impact and some of the stuff that he's capable of doing. Um Right here was another impressive play. This is a uh, kind of a three up coverage. This is just, you know, cover three with Queen working as the weak side hook defender up the seam. I love this rep because, you know, you're getting a vertical route from the number one at the top and there's no other threats over there except the back that's going out to the flat and they have that covered with the other defender that's already out there. So he does a good job getting his vision back to the other side of the field and he's working for threats that are coming in to that side of the field. So right here, you can see him as the weak hook, and he's going to find this number two receiver from the other side of the screen, get under this hook, and take that away. Again, you force a check down, trust your teammates to make the tackle underneath. So, you know, that shows good processing, shows a good understanding of, like, where he's supposed to be, a good understanding of route concepts and what offenses are trying to do and attack them at the second level. So there's some really good stuff here in terms of, like, flashes of really good coverage ability. Um, here's another example. The Bengals are running what's called just like standard Y cross. So it's usually some type of clear out. You get a, a a deep over and then some type of in breaker all work into one side of the field. So in this case, the bottom side of the screen or the bottom of the screen. So Tyler Boyd is working up as the number two and he's going on this deep over route. 
watch Queen get depth and get his eyes because he knows the crosser's coming. Now, this transition is solid. You see him get in the way and kind of, you know, he messes up the timing a little bit on it because Boyd ends up having to kind of go around him, flips his hips, and stays pretty sticky right there. Now, I wish when he does this, just like kind of like a coaching point, you would like to see him flip his hips and then remain like at least engaged a little stickier instead of immediately flipping his hips and looking back for the football because, you know, he does – allow a little bit of late separation by that time you know you're hoping that the pass rush has got home and it at this point it had burrow did a good job getting out of the pocket you know and it ends up being a you know pretty much nothing a small scramble but so there are good examples of him processing things in real time and quickly and understanding where he needs to go so now we'll talk a little bit about you know some of the things that you know are kind of negatives or things that he needs to continue to work on to potentially hit his ceiling in pittsburgh so a good example right here is something that I've, I have remember back from his college days. Queen's eyes can get him in trouble from time to time. So right here, the Titans are running this little wildcat formation. You're going to bring a guy kind of in orbit motion or behind Derrick Henry, going to get this little token fake. But watch what it does to Queen and several other players on the Ravens defense. Gets them completely out of position, and he's not able to be in good position to pursue this thing. Ends up being an explosive play. So – there are times still where you'll see false steps from Queen on tape and you'll see, you know, him process things or be fooled by misdirection, play action, things like that. So here was a good example uh, from last season. Triggers really hard down on this play action and then kind of remember what I was talking about, about finding the hook defender or finding the hook player. So this is a good example. They're in a zone coverage right here and he just bites really really hard on the play fake so misdirection and play action fakes can sometimes really get him a little bit over eager or overzealous and you can kind of see what that does for the quarterback right here creates a really easy throw in lane because he's not able to get back into the hook window you know i think he has like one of those oh crap moments right here as he gets through and he sees the quarterback still have the ball he's very surprised i mean does a good job, you know, to try to get back into the play. But at that point, you know, this player is just wide open because, you know, I think that's Elijah Moore, you know, settling down, and that's an explosive play. So some of his mistakes, unfortunately, when I was seeing him on film, ended up in explosive plays. This was one, um, another kind of play action example that I wanted to show with him and Roquan. Um, you know, this should have been an explosive play, but ended up not being. So another example of him just, I feel like it takes him a little bit. Like there are times where he's over – kind of aggressive against play fakes and there are times like this where he doesn't kind of move quick enough and he's almost kind of stuck in neutral so right here if you just look at the difference between like him and Roquan Roquan ends up falling down but look at the difference in the depth that him and Smith have gotten so Smith's like three full yards deeper in his in his drop and you can see like right here you know really what he should be doing as this kind of weak hook defender he should be trying to locate you know, receivers coming from the other side because everybody's on one side of the field. So he should be trying to get his eyes back like right now to find kind of whatever dig or whatever crossing route's going to be coming on that kind of load flow. You know, Smith falls down, but he's just like late getting there, nowhere in the vicinity. And that's really an easy throw. And this should have been a, like a huge play. I believe that's Puka too that dropped that. It was really surprising. But so some of his examples, I feel like of his like worst plays – you know, just because of some of the things that he can get caught doing, uh, whether it's in coverage, when he's forced to identify multiple threats, or just play action fakes or misdirections. Those were kind of the still areas to learn from. And I think that you see like you see the difference in like him and Roquan in coverage because, you know, Roquan was really tasked with a lot of the deeper drops. So a lot of the more advanced coverage responsibilities, whereas Queen, he did a lot of the main coverage stuff, did a lot of stuff in the flat. The stuff that he did do as the true Mike linebacker, there were flashes there. And then there's also flashes like this where he's kind of tasked with identifying, you know, when he's got three threats in zone coverage to his side of the field, he can be a little slow uh, to kind of process things and when he needs to turn and flip or where his eyes need to be in coverage. So right here you see uh, the, the number two receiver is going vertical. He's just late to flip his hips right here. And because he's done that and he hasn't gotten like any type of contact key or anything like that on the receiver, it's kind of setting that, safety up because he's going to have to split one and two and it's setting him up for a free runway so if Stafford does let this ball rip I mean he throws this over the logo and it's probably a touchdown just because he's a little bit late to flip his hips and get around to run and obviously running with wide receivers vertically 
you ideally want to like match carry deliver this to the safety. I mean, that's not an easy matchup for him, but I feel like that's like the next stage in his development is like just being able to process those things a little bit quicker. Um, and then I think you'll see a big, a big, big, um, you know, difference in the terms of like the type of coverage player that he can potentially become. Cause he already does some things like in man coverage in terms of like covering space really, really well. Uh, I think the zone coverage stuff, there's flashes, but he's just not really like a complete player there. It's more theory than, you know, finished product, but he's a good coverage player. He's just not, like I said, he's not all the way there yet. The only concern I really had against the run with Queen, and I feel like this was really prior knowledge too, um, not necessarily something I focused on as much in this film room, but, um, you know, Queen does a lot better against like zone runs where he's able to kind of penetrate and get into gaps. But when teams run more like power or man stuff, so if you get any type of duo, counters, things like that, he has a little bit more difficulty fitting those up. And the reason for that is because when offensive linemen get get their hands on him at the second level, he does have a little bit of a difficulty, you know, deconstructing blocks. That's really not his strength. You know, he's a, he's a smaller linebacker. He's only about – he's listed like 228. I would anticipate that he probably plays somewhere around there. Um, but he also doesn't have like, you know, extremely long arms. So that hurts, that hurts him kind of there. But a lot of times you'll see Mason Cole kind of get into his chest right here and kind of drive him and just wash him completely out of the play. And, you know, Jalen Warren's able to kind of spin move and run right off the backside right there for, you know, an explosive run. So you just have to understand like Queen, he's going to win with quickness, win with his athleticism, but he's not a guy who, you know, don't think of him. And I, I don't think that people do, but he's not a guy that's necessarily like a true thumper, or a true Mac, old school Mac linebacker that's going to, you know, come downhill and just, you know, win a bunch of these one-on-one -on -one blocks. Like he can do it. There are flashes, but I would consider him like below average in this regard in terms of when people are able to get to the second level. Cause he doesn't, you'd like to see him use his quickness a little bit more at the second level to kind of like get underneath blocks or just kind of avoid blocks altogether instead of getting into these one-on-one -on -one altercations. Um, but again, he's only 24 years old. Like that's the one thing that I've tried to like hammer home. Like now that I've showed you guys all these examples, you know, I said it yesterday when I did the an analysis on the video, but Queens 24 years old, you're not paying him for the player that he was in Baltimore. You're paying him because you think he can get even better in Pittsburgh. And I think that the Steelers have a really good foundation on that side of the ball. They're going to have a bunch of other good players that he's playing with. And I think there's already a baseline for him to be a good player. I'm excited to see what his responsibilities are going to be within the defense if they handle him even more coverage responsibility than what he had in Baltimore because I do think that he can handle it. I, I, I truly believe that. I think if you give him time and experience and as he gets older, he's going to continue to grow as a coverage player. And he's already like – people that say that he can't cover, that's just it's just not true in my opinion. And then the stuff that he does against the run – True sideline to sideline player, run and hit. This is a guy who can be around the ball. He's going to be uh, making plays behind the line of scrimmage. And then as a blitzer, again, if you're going to get the most out of Patrick Queen, you got to let him loose. You know, this is this guy needs to be a weapon or a chess piece that you really, like, again, weaponize on defense. You can't have him play, like, just like a standard inside linebacker, get creative with him, you know, and play to his strengths. And I'm really excited to see how they do that. It's a really good addition. There's only the only guaranteed money for his contract is really the signing bonus, which I think was a little over 10 million, and then the first year of his salary, which is a little over 2 million. This is a very team friendly contract that they can get out of. There's very little risk, in my opinion. I think that Patrick Queen is a good player, or maybe even very good player, who has a chance to be a very, very, very good player or elite player, provided he continues to round his game out in coverage. So. As always, I appreciate you guys watching the video. Let me know what you guys think of the video of the Patrick Queen signing. Uh, if y'all stay to the end, thank you very much. Just make sure that you like the video, subscribe, turn on notifications. All that good stuff is greatly appreciated on my end. Peace and love.